Throughout his brilliant career, Ricky Carmichael has won in every way imaginable. Last Saturday night, he did the unthinkable. The AMA's all-time winner put on a show after falling and giving up the lead. He passed Kevin Wyndham for second, coming inside and forcing the issue on the popular Honda Rider. When I was out there racing, you know, I heard him come up the inside, so I, I darted off to the inside, which was where the hot line was there, and uh, felt the pressure underneath me, and we, we hooked, you know, and I kind of just pushed all the way out to the outside bail. So, you know, it's racing, and uh, I know what to expect from him now, and, uh, you know, if I'm ever in the position, I guess uh, we'll have to uh, try that maneuver on him. He then set out after race leader Chad Reed. With only a few laps remaining, Carmichael caught and passed his rival to earn his sixth victory of the season. I had to, you know, get a, get a little uh, aggressive with my passes. It wasn't like high speed or anything, just kind of coasties, you know, but uh, I hate to race like that, but sometimes there's tracks out there and that uh, you have to do that. But I had a good time tonight racing Chad and, uh, of course, Kevin for a little bit and just really happy for the win. After two epic battles, 250 Supercross moves to the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, the show me state, the gateway to the west place host to the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series from the Edward Jones Dome, a packed house. Came to see the best Supercross riders in the world throw down. I'm Robbie Floyd with Denny Stevens and Davey Coombs down on the floor. Denny, what a great series we've had so far, especially the last few weeks in Indy and in Atlanta. Man, could it get any better than this? An incredible race last week in Atlanta. Ricky Carmichael goes down, yet still comes back, passes Wyndham, passes Reed aggressively to take the win this weekend here in St. Louis. He's going for 40. 40 main event wins. Chad Reed on the other hand, he's never been beaten here in St. Louis. He wants to keep that streak going, but right now, he's got number four in the brain. He's, he's haunted in the sleep by Ricky Carmichael. And then, Kevin Windham. He got passed last week aggressively. He said in his post-race interview, hey, you know what? I didn't appreciate that, Ricky Carmichael. When he comes around, goes around, and I will pay you back. He's fired up. And then there's Jeremy McGrath, the legend. The Mac is back. He's done nothing but add excitement to this 2005 season. He's here, and I'm excited to watch him tonight. All right, Dan, let's take a look at the series points. The THQ World Supercross GP, Ricky Carmichael, leads Ricky, uh, Mike LaRocco by 40. He fought not in this race. He's out with injury. And we look at the AMA Supercross series. Carmichael has a full lead, or a full race lead over Chad Reed, and Reed has a full lead over Wyndham. A great track here in St. Louis. For more on it, let's go down to Davey Coombs. Most of the time, Supercross tracks are really hard packed. They like to do that so the riders get good grip going off the jumps and everything. But here in St. Louis, the Dirtworks guys tried something different. They laid down a whole bunch of sand and basically built one big sandbox. It's been good drivers giving the riders fits all day long. And here's the reason why. This sand is not packing. It's really, really loose. The berms are blowing out. I have a feeling all night long we're going to see passing here, maybe even a few falls. For more on the track, let's go to Denny Stevenson. Thanks, Robbie. As you can see, a split start this weekend, only a second time we've seen this all season long. Into a fast, sweeping first corner. Rhythm section, lots of different ways to go through this. Double and triple and I see a lot of passing right now tonight. Whoop section, Chad Reed, this is what you've been waiting for all night long, baby. Long, two long sections. Coming and going. Into a right-handed, into a sand section. Ricky Carmack, you're from Florida. It's sand, baby, it's all about you. And on, off, into the first triple jump of the track. A right-handed 90-degree corner into another rhythm section. A variety of different ways to do this section as well. Turn right, your second triple jump of the track. Leads into kind of a, a rhythm whoop section. The final corner. A lot of passing I see going on here. A big bowl corner. And that's it. Your MX versus ATV Unleashed track map. What a great track we have here in St. Louis. The crowd's ready to see heat race number one of the 250s. About 50,000 people, I'm hearing, packed their uh, way into this event. Normally held for the, uh, so what's the Rams play here? Is that right? Rams right here. This is a great town, great city, great, great race tonight. Out with the AstroTurf, in with the dirt. We even brought in a sand section, 6,800 cubic yards, 2,000 feet long. Split start over and under.
Thunder Bridge, we bring it all to here at St. Louis in the longest wood section this year. You get a choice of two lines. Here's how you make it into the main event. Two heats, four in each of our two heats move on. Then our semifinals, top five and one LCQ. Only two make it to that 20 lap main event. You see the 30 second car when it goes sideways. It's about time to go. Look at the big guns in the heat race number one. Chad Reed and Kevin Windham, first and third respectively in series points. Pick your favorite, ladies and gentlemen. It's about to throw down. If the 250 heat race is anything like we've seen practice, anything can happen. We have a sand section, and these guys cannot take it lightly. Kevin Windham looks for his second win on the year. He won the first race of the season. What a monster hole shot by Chad Reed. He had the hole shot five feet on the gate on the, over that 450 Honda. Man, guesses. impressive. Yeah, no doubt about that with the 22 Yamaha, the factory Yamaha in the lead. There's Kevin Wyndham. This should be his track as far as the Wolves are concerned. And Wyndham goes by, but can he hold it? Did you see Kevin give a, give a glance over at Chad to make sure there's going to be a door open? I mean, he's going to do it again. The door doesn't have to be open, did he? Look at him on the outside. Wow, this is unreal. Chad Reed's been looking for a big whoop section all season long. And right there, first left, Kevin Wyndham almost puts the beat down on him right off the bat. We talked about at the top of the show how they were disgusted probably with themselves after what Ricky did to them at Atlanta. Well, now it's time to battle each other without Carmichael, and it looks like without a doubt that Wyndham is a little faster in the whoops, and we knew that that's where Reed really needed to turn on if he was going to be Carmichael. Definitely. Look at that. Sebastian Tortelli lurking in third there on that RMZ 450 Suzuki. The 450s are all over Reed right now. Chad Reed, Kevin Wyndham, Sebastian Tortelli, Ernesto Fonseca. One, two, three, and four. Our 250cc heat race number one. Coming out of the whoops that time, Reed looked like he didn't get quite the drive that he wanted to, that Wyndham, that Wyndham got, but then Wyndham made a mistake, didn't quite get across the top as fast as he did that first lap. Chad Reed now living in Florida. Do you think he gets much time in the sand? No, he spent a lot of time. Look at that sand. The sand section is getting eight up big time. There's getting ruts everywhere. I, I, I keep it on that section throughout the night. The RMT 450, the Suzuki starting to look strong now, closing in on Kevin Wyndham. Sebastian Torcelli looks good. He's trying to prove a point to Wyndham, saying, no, I'm not just going to let it be the Reed car Michael Wyndham show. We need a we need a little flavor in there, a little European action. Yeah, Sebastian's goal with Suzuki is to test that 450 for Ricky in the outdoors. He knows that Suzuki knows that he's not a Supercross specialist. He's an outdoor specialist. But right now, he's looking good. He got a fourth in Atlanta last weekend, and now just lurking all over Wyndham. And Ernesto Fonseca, he's close there in fourth, and he's had a good season so far as well. We only take four into the final. Tyler Evans in fifth spot, hoping to move up at least one more spot. But the story is Chad Reed, right at number 22, separating himself from the rest of the field. Second spot, Kevin Windham, number 14. The 103, Sebastian Tortelli, a little bit of a bobble there. There comes the former Costa Rican national champion. You know he knows Sand, Ernesto Fonseca, the factory Honda, back in that final transfer spot in fourth. Some great international flavor run here. The top four, we got the French, the American, more fr uh, the, uh, the Aussie, the Costa Rican, international here in St. Louis. I like that. Top four, some international flavor. But Chad Reed is leading this. He raced number one of the 250s. Chad Reed leads Kevin Windham, Sebastian Tortelli, and Ernesto Fonseca. This thing's far from done. Don't go anywhere. Supercross GP in the THQ AMA Supercross Series heat race. Number one of the 250, Chad Reed, the Australian on the factory Yamaha is leading this with a little pressure early on from Kevin Wyndham. Number 14 on the factory Honda. He's in second. Sebastian Tortelli third. Ernesto Fonseca in fourth. And now Reed coming in to lap traffic. Let's go down to Davey Coombs for a second. Well, right now, Chad Reed is leading this race, Robbie, but he is trying to get a 49. I'm watching the team Yamaha mechanic, Aaron Swanson. He keeps putting get 49, get 49. They want to send a signal to Carmichael because all day long, Reed has not been able to get that time. And Carmichael is laying them down consistently in practice. And you can bet Carmichael is watching right now on the starting gate. Oh, look at that right there. There's Darren Sorensen, Reed's mechanic. And, and we saw that in the practice time. Carmichael did it in the second practice, but he also got a 49 in the first practice. And Reed makes a big mistake right there. 49 is going to be tough for him. If he hasn't got it all night, all night long, he's made some mistakes in his heat race, heat race Robbie. He's not looking as fluid as we would hope that we would see from Chad Reed. 22, looking for something that maybe not isn't there just yet. Ricky Carmichael, we know he can do it. We saw him post those times in practice. Oh. The interval, three and a half seconds. Chad Reed. 
for Kevin Wyndham. A little adjustment on the clutch. You see him take that left hand off. Clutch might be heating up a little bit. Might be firing it up in that, in that uh, sand section. A different kind of course here. It's tacky dirt, but it also has that sand in it. It makes it tough. Let's take a look at the replay. Just happened a moment ago. Chad Reed made this bobble. Watch him drift to the outside. There's a tough block in the track. There was no, you know, the flag was out. Obviously, Chad was probably looking for a motorcycle. Instead, there was a tough block right in the track. Not much he can do there. We thought it was a bobble from him, but really, no fault of Chad Reed. Second spot. Kevin Wyndham, you look at the distance, three and a half seconds. He might be closing that up just a little bit, maybe putting some pressure on towards the end. We only take four riders into this main event. Eight laps, 250cc, heat race number one. Yellow flags, be cautioned, watch out. There should always be yellow flags in that sandy section. Yeah, that sand is just eating guys up. But look at the battle for third right now. Sebastian Dortelli and Ernesto Fonseca. Ernesto and, and Sebastian, this is a statement right here. You want to pass the guy. Ernesto wants to get by him and go, hey, I'm faster than Sebastian. Don't even, get, don't even mess with me. Two factory riders. We're going to take a look at Chad Reed now trying to separate himself from Wyndham. Takes the checker flag and the win. There's Wyndham right behind. Let's take a look at that race for third. Just behind Tortelli and Fonseca. Tortelli holds him off. Fonseca in fourth. Fonseca was in fourth up until the last lap last week in the 250 main event. Dropped back to six. A little stuff by LaRocco. And look at two buddies having a little discussion there. Chad Reed and Kevin Wyndham. As we take a look at the 250cc heat race number one results, Chad Reed can win the heat race. How about the main event? Win them. Tortelli, Fonseca move on. Now let's go back down to the podium with Davy Coombs. Well, Chad Reed's getting some last man instructions from Darren Sorensen. Chad, that was a really good race. Tell me about Wyndham at the beginning. Looks like he really had those whoop styles. That was all right. <laughs> Great start. That's uh, been working on that, trying to get that down because it's too hard to chase these guys. You know, the tracks are becoming really fast. and got to be there from the beginning and uh, happy to get that just trying to figure out the track Chance has changed a lot since practice and uh, having fun with it you know Kevin's a great guy I love racing with him and it uh, brings back some old times when you have any Miami what did he say to you after the race when he pulled up he just said a uh, good race and uh, Texas said let's go get calm like <laughs> well, we'll see if you can do it in the main event good ride Jeff yeah thanks you know I want to give a shout out to my good friend uh, Jeff Fox from Fox and Thor and I'm one of the sponsors, the guys at Ant Mobile and Ant Nixon. I'm uh, real glad that I can have you guys on the team. Thanks. Thanks, Davey. Down there with Chad Reed. 250cc heat race number two about to get underway. We take a look at this. Denny, Ricky Carmichael in this one. Also, MC, Jeremy McGrath, Mike LaRocco. This is a very stacked factory heat race. It's great to have Jeremy McGrath here in St. Louis. It's one of his final, I think, on his tour this season. Uh, we weren't really sure if we'd see him. He's here in St. Louis. The Big Mac is back. <laughs> Big Mac. And it kind of probably leaves a sour taste in his mouth. Back in 1996, he won every single Supercross except for this one, Denny Stevens. You were part of that when you were in the main event, and uh, that one race really did it in for him for the perfect season. Yeah, that was a tough one. I think it was a hard pill for him to swallow. He almost had the perfect Supercross season. No one's ever had it. He lost it right here to Jeff Emick in St. Louis, Jeff's hometown. And, uh, yeah, we see Bax got the helmet cam, talking with Ricky Carmichael. I mean, what a, what a cherished moment right there. I mean, two of the best riders probably ever just hanging out on the starting line, having a friendly conversation for the man, or before the heat race. Without a doubt, the man to your left, the king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath, the man right there, number four, Ricky Carmichael, the best motocrosser of all time. He owns the outdoors, the old man to ever have a perfect season. He doesn't do it once. He does it twice, did he, Stevenson? You see the fire in his eyes this year that you didn't see a couple of years ago before his in uh, injury. He's not riding conservative with the points lead. An interesting fact with these guys right now, Ricky Carmichael trying to get his 40th win tonight. If he gets it tonight, he'll get in 85 starts. McGrath, he got 40 and only 62 starts. You're telling me McGrath's better than Supergrass? Well, uh, he, he won more sooner. <laughs> You know this, Denny Stevenson. Those are the, the best two riders, the icon in the sport. Jeremy McGrath, rider number two. Ricky Carmichael, number four. Ricky's been running the helmet cam. MC takes it over uh, today. And this crowd will erupt, just like it's happened so many times at other events at Anaheim 1. If McGrath gets that hole shot, the race, I mean, everybody on their feet. Jeremy is super cross right now. I, I wasn't really sure what, what he, when he made his comeback, if he made the right decision or not. Boy, I was wrong, man. It's awesome to have him back. The fans love him. The riders love him. It's great to have him back here in Supercross and in St. Louis. Don't count out David Villeman, Mike LaRocco in this race as well. Andrew Short, we see him on the 250s here on the East Coast. He's quite capable of taking a 250 heat race win. 
Andrew Shoryak thanks to his debut last week in Atlanta. Had some problems, fell down a couple different times. He said he only had a couple days of riding time on the bike before last weekend. This week he got a chance to ride the Supercross. He feels strong. Let's keep an eye on Andrew Short in that number 51 Honda. 250 heat race number two. Ricky Carmichael, your leader, Mike LaRocco in second, or is it? It's Jeremy McGrath in second. LaRocco, rider number five in third. We're looking for the top four, and it looks like it's David Philbin and Timmy Ferry. You're looking on board. Jeremy McGrath, CR. And boy, he has pressure from Mike LaRocco. And now you're going to see to the right side of it very quickly. David Philbin sticking a nose in. Robbie, did you see the view of the helmet cap? That's how quickly Ricky Carmichael disappears. He vanished. <laughs> I mean, he was in front of us for a second, hammered his two seconds of whoops, and all of a sudden he's opened up for like a three-second lead, just like that. Mike LaRocco second, McGrath third. What a, a turn of events there. I mean, on the first lap, you see how fast Ricky Carmichael is. The only man, it's really, he's in a league of his own right now. Half a second faster in practice than anybody, and he's looking even faster than that come race time. He escaped, man. He took off like a, an unreal, like a rocket. <laughs> like what? Second, Mike LaRocco, man. He is... He right now just wants to go, hey, I'm going to keep an eye on Ricky because I'm going to hold on to second right now. This race for second still rages on. Honda's second and third, but the Suzuki of Ricky Carmichael, a full straightaway ahead of Mike LaRocco, Jeremy McGrath, David Phillip, and Timmy Ferry. Only four move on. Ferry's outside a transfer spot. Michael Byrne on the factory, Kawasaki, he tries moving up as well. Did you say Billman right there? Billman trying the wide line in the sand. It's nice to see him trying different lines, trying to mix things up. If you're, gonna, if you're following, you're not going to go past the guy in front of you. David Billman out of Marietta, California. The Frenchman on the Yamaha Motor Corporation Bridgestone. Yamaha tries getting by Jeremy McGrath, and I've seen this throughout this season. Maybe they give uh, Jeremy a little extra courtesy. They don't give some of the other riders as well. No, I think that's a great point, Robbie. I know Jeremy... You know, he's a legend, you know, and I think they sometimes give him the benefit of the doubt. If he's in front of him, they feel like he tried, instead of doing an aggressive move, they give him a little bit of extra room. Not, they don't drop the elbow on him, maybe like they would some other guy. All right, I got a fact for you. You see the, the riders up at the top of your screen, brought to you by Tiso. The last lap, Ricky Carmichael, a 49.68. He not only dipped into the 49s, he's almost halfway through them now. I mean, he might turn a 48 before the night's over with. It's a big number, you know, 49. It's a, I mean, that's definitely making a statement right here in heat race number two. Pulling away from the rest of the riders over a second a lap faster than Mike LaRocco. Jeremy McGrath, David Billiman going at it third and fourth place right respectively. Here. Billiman goes to the outside. He's got it. Billiman's doing it. something different there. McGrath is tripling in and then doubling out. Well, Billiman's only going double, double, single, and he lost absolutely no time. Almost actually made a pass on him trying a different way. Morocco in second, McGrath in third, Billiman in that final transfer spot in fourth, it's tied for qualifying, stay with us, we have a lot more knee racing still to come. Mike Rock on that red five right there. Oh, 
off the camera there. Tim Little Perry pressure. He was in fifth. He was trying to pass pressure uh, McGrath to that final transfer spot, Robbie. Little pressure off of Jeremy McGrath now. But he's probably going, whoa, man. I, I didn't want that any longer. Look at the whoops right there. These whoops are getting eight out, Rob. They're getting cupped. The longer you these guys ride, you start to get a cup lip, and that's what drops the front end down, and these guys are having a hard time blitzing all the way across the top right now. These things are becoming monstrous. Riders coming into lap traffic. Ricky Carmichael, one more turn. He's going to take the checkered flag. I want you to see this. Ricky Carmichael takes the checkered flag. It's going to be at least 15 seconds behind in the heat race for second place. Mike LaRocco, after he makes this right-hand turn, he's going to take the checkered flag for a second if he keeps it on two wheels and there it is Mike LaRocco second David Billiman third and Jeremy McGrath takes the final transfer as we take a look at the 250cc heat race two results Carmichael so far has 16 seconds ahead of LaRocco Billiman McGrath in fourth taking that final transfer spot he had some pressure what happened to Tim Ferry who was in fifth did he you see Timmy coming around this corner right now he's already lurking behind McGrath Right uh, just right on the camera range where you see him just drop in the front end right there. He just gets into the tough blocks, kind of loses his balance, and just tips over. It's a silly mistake. He's going to have to regret that. He's going to have to go to the semifinal. Barry's going to have to ride this semi. Let's go down to D.C. R.C., it looked like you were trying out there. I mean, you still got all your tear offs, but I know you were. I was watching Mike Gosser's board. You were trying to lay down some 49s, weren't you? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I feel great, Davey, and... Uh, it's going to be a tough main event. Myself and Chad, you know, we're going for the title. And, uh, you know, I, the last two weeks in the main events, I've had some mistakes, you know, with the fall last weekend and just want to eliminate that. And uh, I'm ready for the main. That was a good heat race. You know, Chad won that first race, and I asked him what Kevin Windham said when he pulled up, and he said, let's get Carmichael. What do you think of that? Uh, you know what? Uh, I love the challenge, and uh, can't blame a guy for trying. And uh, that's what I want to do, keep him trying as long as I don't let it happen. I can't wait to see the main event. Thanks a lot. Carmichael shows his authority with another heat race win. Speaking of RSC, he gives us this week's Suzuki strategy and his approach to last week's whoop section. This week's Suzuki strategy, we look at Ricky Carmichael's ongoing work in progress of the whoops. To the left, you see him blitzing it when he started out in Atlanta. By the end of the night, in the main event, he was taking a leap of faith and jumping into him. We had a chance to sit down with Ricky and talk whoop strategy. I just been trying to be smart about picking different lines, you know, uh, and, and having other options, which I couldn't do a couple years ago, and I've been able to do this year, and I think that uh, I'm able to put myself in areas where I can, you know, either blitz the hoops or, or jump through them, and I think that's good to be able to do that instead of, you know, same one line and, and taking the, you know, same line over and over where you can split it up. I really like that, and uh, it was just kind of a main event decision. Uh, I know, you know, after watching the race on TV, I was taking a bunch of different lines, and that's nice, you know, instead of taking the same line behind the guy, it gives a little different variation, and uh, both of those options was a main event decision. Two years ago, Ricky put all of his eggs in one basket and set his bike up for the whoops and the whoops only. But this year, he's learned that there's more than one section in Supercross. I want to set my bike up just for the whoop section because I think my bike is really good through there and I want to be better in other areas. So if I'm at least the same or, you know, a little bit faster or just a little bit slower, I, that's good enough for me. You know, I think there's other aspects of the track. Putting that Suzuki strategy to good use in the whoop section in Atlanta here as well. K-Dub's coming, though, in the main event. Watch out, head-to-head -head battle. 250 qualifying results as the game stop. 250 semi number one, Hambone takes the win. His third main event of the year. Andrew Short wins semi number two, brought to you by Thor and Samsung Wireless. 250 LCQ results. Jason Thomas, Ryan Clark, they move on. Dennis Ewing, unfortunately, you've got a great seat at home, buddy. No main event for you. That's going to be it for our qualifying results here in St. Louis. Makita Suzuki's Ricky Carmichael comes into St. Louis looking for win number seven. Can San Diego winner Chad Reed stop the streaking Carmichael? Or will Anaheim one victor Kevin Windham find the top spot on the podium again? The 250 main event is next.
beautiful St. Louis, Missouri, just off the banks of the muddy Mississippi River. You see Gateway Arch, the gateway to the west. You have the gateway to Supercross right in your living room here at the Edwards Jones Dome for the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series here in St. Louis. Look at this crowd. What a turnout. These fans are not disappointed. I'm Robbie Floyd with Denny Stevenson, Davey Coombs, getting the reports down on the floor. I talk about this amount, the massive amount of people in here. Take a look at the attendance number. 53,197 people enjoying Supercross live here. And we're black, glad you could be a part of it here on ESPN2. The 250cc main event is about to get underway, but first let's go down to Davey Coombs with our Honda Pit Report. Well, thanks, Robbie. First of all, we're missing Heath Boss down here on the starting gate. The rider got hurt in Texas practicing this week. Speaking of being hurt, when this season started, they were talking about a perfect storm. It's been a great race between Carmichael and Reed and Wyndham, but guess who knows when he's coming back? Right there, number 259, James Stewart, March 19th. That's going to mark the return of not James Stewart, but THQ Supercross to Orlando. Make sure you get your tickets. Bubba's coming back. He's coming back to win. I heard it firsthand. Thanks, Davey. You know, what was the cover of Razor X? It's all about, what, January 8th, the first stop on the, the uh, AMA Supercross Series. As we take a look at our Suzuki starting grid, that has now moved to March 19th. It's all about that. All right. We have seen this starting gate wreck havoc in, in all of our racing tonight so far, Denny. Is it better to be on the inside of that, that big mound, the uh, tabletop finish line jump, or is it better to be on the outside? It seems like as though, it seems as though the inside is the place to be. Ricky Carmichael, all these guys are lined up inside the box because basically, if you're on the outside and you don't get there first, you're going to get punted in the hay bales, and you don't want that to happen, obviously. You want to be inside ready to do the punting. Jeremy McGrath with our helmet cam. Ricky Carmichael, the winningest AMA rider of all time. Kevin Wyndham already has a win on the season. Jack Chad Reed has a win on the season. Both of those guys looking for two. Let's take a look at Denny's do's and don'ts, Debo. Basically, you don't crash. Unless you're Ricky Carmichael, you probably could. And don't get <laughs> stuck in the sand. These, this sand section is deep. You're going to fall down. You don't want that to happen. You do want to get a good start, and you do want to run. Because if you get out front, you better start running. Because that number four, he's going to be chasing you. <laughs> he's going to be getting you like the dog catcher. Run, Forrest. You might be running away. Uh, hopefully, this guy will be running away for the rest of the field. Jeremy McGrath. 33 years old, it passed his prime in Supercross, let's say that. He's going to be running our helmet cam. This guy, he knows how to win. He's done it here before. He's had he three do times here, as a matter of fact. Can he do it again, Denny? That's going to be the question. He come out of retirement. It's not even his go-away season. It's just paying tribute to all of his favorite fans. Ricky Carmichael going for his fourth win here in St. Louis of all time. He's won in 125s. He's won in 250s. He's going for his 40th overall as well. He's looking to get put himself on the map and put the final stamp on Chad Reed. Let's take a look at the starting line. Here we go. 250 made a bet. Who will take the Butterfinger Chris Pole Shot Award? RC number four, Ricky Carmichael. Uh-oh, boys and girls. Ricky's out in front of the start. Kevin Wyndham in second, number 14. Chad Reed in third. The heavy hitters are up there. Mike LaRocco just behind. Well, we watched that heat race. We were doing Messi at the helmet camp, and man, oh, Ricky just took off. He's taken off again. Actually, it's Fonseca in second, followed by Reed, LaRocco. There's Kevin Wyndham just outside the top five with the number 12 of David Billiman trying to sneak in there. So Carmichael, look at this, Diddy. How fast is this guy? He's not even a full lap down and already about a second and a half ahead. He is gone. He has taken off right now. He's going to put a stamp right now. Chad Reed got leaned on so hard in that first turn that he just got, got shut off. Opened up the door for Nessa Fonseca to get set, to open up and get second. And uh, right now, Reed needs to get by 24 if he has any chance to close the gap on number four. 32 points separate Carmichael and Reed as far as this championship of the AMA Supercross Series. He can't afford to lose anymore. <laughs> No more. Wyndham just makes a pass on LaRocco right there. Wyndham also, he said this last weekend, hey, I don't like getting passed like that by Carmichael. If I get a chance, I'm going to throw an elbow on him. But right now, oh, look man. at him just flying through the whoops. Have he, new way. He's been on fire through the whoops all night long. This is a chance for him to kind of put an, an exclamation point on Chad Ringo. Hey, I'm proud to get in third. It's time for at least get second. All right, last week he was the one being punted. Does he punt tonight? Does he turn into the kicker? You know, I don't think so. I think him and Reed are, aren't going to drop elbows on each other. They're going to ride a little bit smoother. But right now, they're both dogging that 24 for Ernesto Fonseca. They triple double into this section. Former Costa Rican national champion Ernesto Fonseca, number 24 on that factory Honda, now living in California.
California has Chad Reed, the Australian, now living in Florida. Hot on his tail. Reed tried to set him up. Looks so much like Jeremy McGrath, his style. McGrath back Look at in 12 spot. Right there. Uh, it stops him. Uh, just opened up the door. Ernesto kind of, think, kind of felt him look there, looked over at him and said, oh, go by, I'd rather not get parked. Watch Kevin win it right here. He's the second hunt in your screen. He's been so fast in that one section earlier. He was jumping so far into him. It looks like that may be the fastest way through. Look, these guys trying various lines. This sand section has been nothing but a success this weekend. Guys trying all kinds of different lines. Now Kevin Wyndham trying to do anything he can to get around Ernesto and not let Reed at least get away for a second because Ricky, he's long gone. He's a, a, I got a five-second lead right now. You see the Tissot running order at the top of your screen. It's the number four, Ricky Carmine le leading. Chad Reed, number 22, Ernesto Fonseca, and Kevin Wyndham going at it to Honda Pilots. Just behind them, Mike LaRocco. Tim Ferry has moved in and passed David Villeman. Let's take a look at a replay, Debo. We're still going to stay with our live action. As the pass happens, Wyndham takes over third. The same sector where Reed passed Fonseca. We're going to look at it right here. Look at the box. Look at Reed. Look at diving the inside right now. He dives the inside. Ernesto kind of looks under him, goes, lifts it up, goes, man, I got nothing to do for it. I got nothing for it. You got to make the pass. And then he happens. The same thing happens to Kevin Wyndham passes him as well. Fonzi made the mistake of going too high. He knew he was trapped. If he would have dove down, he might have taken them both out. But Fonzi does the smart thing. Now he drops back into fourth spot. Wyndham into third. Does Wyndham have anything for Reed now that he has him directly well, in front of Reed him? Right here. Right. Reed goes double-double single. All the Yamaha guys are doing that tonight. Bowman was doing it. Barry's doing it. I don't know if that's something they think is different. Here comes Bowman doing the same thing. Double-double single. That's a new line. It's a different variation, a different way to try and uh, maybe make a pass. We talked to Ricky Carmichael but that Suzuki track. He said he likes to change things up. These guys have obviously been listening. Earlier, they were trying to get, Reed's mechanic was trying to get him to run a 49. His best time, a 50.990. That was just with his last lap. Carmichael's best time is a 49.85, so he is turning 49 second lap time. What a race. Ricky Carmichael got the whole shot. Know what these competitors wanted to see. He's trying to separate his way for the field. He's got a seven-second lead, but don't count out Chad Reed and Kevin Winham. They're trying to close in. We'll be back to St. Louis after this. Welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome. We're in the 250cc main event. We've completed seven laps of this 20-lap main event. We're looking at the battle for fourth right now. Ernesto Fonseca, David Billiman. Fonseca on the red bike, Billiman on the blue. Honda versus Yamaha. Look at that, the last lap of 51.43. Carmichael running 49 seconds. Billiman who has been known to wear out as the race progresses. Watch out the case Watch him in his outside line. He uses it in his heat race, slingshot pass the grass. He's going to try the same thing on Fonseca. Fonzi had something for him. He did. And Fonzi got to that inside line very quickly, really smooth, was unable to, 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 was unable to make a move on him. All right, Denny, we're going to take a look back at Ricky Carmichael. He was way out in front, but he had a bobble. Watch this in the woods. Well, when you got going as fast as Ricky Carmichael is, that thing is rocketing. He's gotten a little on the edge of the rut. The bike danced, and he just held on the throttle. Look, oh. it comes flying in the woods. That guy is so strong, he flats arms on the motocross. He's an animal. He fought the bike, no problem. Billman made the pass. You saw in the upper right happen live here at the St. Louis Edward Jones Dome. We didn't go away for a break. We learned our lesson. So many people swap at Supercross. Billman now working his way up. He's in the fourth spot now after getting by Fonseca. But man, what a close call for Carmichael. When we thought he, he almost looks perfect, you can see he, he's not. He's right that, on the end. That was a little bit of Carmichael hold right there. Just And when in doubt, Ricky just gasses the throttle a little bit harder, and the, the momentum of that bike just... just Pulled him out of that crash. When he he looked like he was crashing into Wolf, and then that back end kicked up. I do not know how he saved it. Very reminiscent of the 125 class in, in Atlanta where Matt Walker really saved a close a close one. Ricky Carmichael, he's led all nine laps. He took the Butterfinger Chris Hole shot award. Look at that Suzuki powering through. This is a man who's on a new team. Uh, you think he likes the bike? And he's hopping through the Wolf. That's something we talked about earlier. Let's go down to David Coombs. You guys were talking about Ricky Carmichael going through the woods ever since that close call. Chad Reed has actually started to close in on him. I think that Ricky got a little spooked that time. As you saw by the replay, it was an amazing save to keep an eye on Reed. His pit board guys letting him know he is now catching Ricky Carmichael. You're Thanks, exactly Dave. right there. He's in this last lap. He went 0.3 faster. He's closing the gap ever so slightly. Yeah, Ricky's fastest lap was the fourth lap. Chad Reed's was the last lap. So, yeah, you're right. He is closing, Davey. And, and that's how 
read one to other race. I don't want to say that's exactly how, but Carmichael got the lap traffic. He made a few mistakes, and Reed took advantage of it. Now you're seeing Ernesto Fonseca and Mike Larago going at it. Fonseca's in fifth. Right at number 24 on the Honda, the Amsoil Honda of Mike Larocco just behind him. Now this was a race last week. Larocco actually stuck it to Fonseca, went from fourth. Fonseca did back to sixth, and he was mad last week. Well, let's see if Fonseca remembers it, because Mike Larocco is definitely eating him up in the whoop section right now. He dropped the inside. Fonte's smooth, though. He's looking good. This is a good section. Fonseca's going to go to the inside to try and take the tight line. Larocco's going to try and go around the outside. No, I, I can promise you he remembers. I talked to him just before he went out here in the booth. He's like, man, I don't know what happened. You know, he stuck it to me at the end. They both bobbled. Morocco picked it up faster. This is the main thing on Fonzie's mind right now. And if Morocco gets by, watch out. Ernie's still not going to give up. Two Hondas going at it, but it was the Suzuki as we take a look at our front of finger Chris whole shot replay. It was the Suzuki who came out on top, did he? On the inside of your screen, look at Ricky Carmichael. He's leaning on Reed, just leans on him, pinches him into the top blocks, actually, and takes the whole shot right here as he hits the line. But that is the key right there. That is the race win, and that's how Carmichael, why he's so unbeatable. He's unstoppable from the time the gate drops to the checkered flag hit. 1500 bucks goes his way from the Butterfinger Chris Whole Shot Award. Here it is. Uh oh, Fonseca having to go oh. to the outside this time now. Changing up lines right there because of Sean Hamlin. Fonseca goes wide, Whoa. opens up the door for Larocco, and Larocco just moves over a little bit, shuts the door, and forces Fonseca to go double single. Fonseca caves in a little bit of bubble there. We're going to take a break here at the Edward Jones Dome 250cc main event. And when we come back, we're going to take a uh, take a lap with MC Jeremy McGrath, the king of Supercross. Don't go anywhere. Stay focused. It's the THQ World Supercross GP from St. Louis, Missouri. Mike LaRocco was in the top five position. He was in fifth spot, but he went down. A little bit of bobble cost him position. He drops back to eighth spot, but he is all over Michael Byrne, who's in seventh right now. We talked about Burt with Morocco coming through the pack. We were all about it. He's front end tuck in the section. Down he went. Three guys went by him. Now he's going to start all over again. Ricky Carmichael's leading this one. That race out in front is no race. He has an 8.7 second lead over Chad Reed, Kevin Windham third, Billiman fourth, Fonseca fifth, then Tortelli Burn. Let's take a look at Larocco one more time. He jumps over this tabletop. He drops in. Watch. He lands front end heavy. Catches the little rear wheel, rear, rear wheel a little bit and just pucks and down he goes. Jeremy McGrath, where is he? He's back in 14th spot. He's running our helmet cam. The number two, that's his national number. The king of Supercross, we told you we'd give you a lap on the track with the king himself. Here it is. On board. He's been seeing some dirt, Timo. No tear off for our helmet cam. Jeremy, unfortunately, did not get a good start. Was very in the pack. Still out there right now, probably with the most popular riders. Obviously, the crowd loves him, but uh, he looks like he's, he looks like he's a little tired tonight. He's been beat up. He went down hard in I-3 a few weeks ago, but he's back in St. Louis throwing a good show for us. Thor, Parts Unlimited, Fun Bike Center Honda. Jeremy McGrath is in 14th right now on the American Honda, kind of making his thank you, everyone, tour right now, saying thank you. He hurt himself a couple of weeks ago in California. He told me last week, man, I was hurt more than I was letting on. My ribs were beat. Yeah, and that's a good point right there. He just gets slapped by Chad Reed. Great camera right there. You know, MC, I, he, I think he kind of got over the hump because he was rocking at that Anaheim 3 round. He was charging. He was letting it hang out a little bit, and boom, it thumped him to the ground. I think he might have realized, he goes, hey, I'm 30-some years old. I'm a seven-time champ. I don't need to get beat up like this. So I think he might be tuning it back a little bit. Let's take a look at that race for fifth. Ernesto Fonseca, the 24 Honda. He's not too far, actually not too far Jeremy, behind Jeremy McGrath because he has Tortelli all over him right now. Tortelli in sixth. Tortelli trying to get his third top five this season right now. That's Suzuki. And I like Tortelli. He's, they call him an outdoor specialist, but he is aggressive. He's trying to make something happen in this St. Louis Supercross. Ernesto Fonseca trying to hold on to another top five, but Tortelli wants a little action. He's been faster than he's wanted, especially in the sand after this it. This looking oh. sideways right there. Tortelli Ooh. throwing the thing sideways, but this sand section has been mixing it up. But this time, both these guys take the same line. Tortelli looks like he's a little big, a little tired, but he is charged right now after that number 24, Fonseca. 
Omega, number 24, the 103. Two international riders riding here in our THQ World Supercross GP. We're looking at this battle for fifth and sixth. There's Ricky Carmichael, the current leader, up in the upper left. That is live. That's what's going on right now. Stepping on, stepping off. Tortelli really put the charge in on Fonseca. Watch Tortelli. They're trying to run it in on him after this rhythm section. They jumped inside. Look at Fonseca. Putting the block move on him. Right here, Fonseca's going to try and block the inside. Tortelli's going to square him up, shoot to the outside to the whoop section. Oh, right there. Fonseca kind of takes his line and holds him up a little bit. Watch out. He's going to undercut him. Now he goes for the front tire, and he loses momentum. Fonseca does. Tortelli ahead. Tortelli did exactly what I thought he was going to do about a quarter before. We waited a quarter later to get the job done and moved into the top five. An excellent ride for the Frenchman. White flag out. Ricky Carmichael, your leader in the upper left, goes through the whoops the final time, giving so much back to the sport. He had that ride for 18 after Atlanta last week. They had donations and it raised up $23,500 last week, a local race in Atlanta. He went out there and signed autographs in the rain. Went out there, he with, yeah. right went out there with DMX radio sat in the rain and signed autograph for at least two to three hours the guy's a champion he's an ambassador of our sport this is the man dude number four he's in everyone's haunting dreams right now he's everybody's nightmares because this guy's an animal that disease that did hold so true to his heart he gets kudos and from that getting all that money he takes the checker flag another win his seventh on the year number four ricky carmichael's victorious in st louis it's going to be Reed Wyndham Billman with Tortelli back in fifth spot. We're looking at that position. That battle for fifth still rages on. Fonseca doesn't want to give up. He knows he's on the last lap, but time is really, really running out. Tortelli, look at the track. The track has been beat up, and he is fighting this track. LaRocco closing in just behind Tortelli right now, trying to get by Fonseca. It happened on the last lap last week. Fonseca is trying to hold off LaRocco, and he does so. Tortelli's going to finish fifth. Fonseca for the second week in a row is sixth. Mike LaRocco in seventh, and Michael Byrne in eighth spot. His eighth win of the year on that Makita Suzuki. This is the yellow area, and look at Chad Reed. Dejected. He'd give it everything he could. We'll hear from our winners when we come back to the Edward Jones Dome. Jones Dome, St. Louis, Missouri for the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. And what a race it was. Unfortunately for the rest of the field, Ricky Carmichael got the whole shot and then took the victory. As we take a look at the Honda results, Carmichael, Reed Windham, we've seen that before, Denny Stevenson. We've seen that top three quite often. We've seen Ricky Ta Carmichael on the top of the board all the time. Fonseca, a hard-fought battle for six. Ryan Clark rounding out the top 20. What a race. Hard fought battle even for third spot. Kevin Wyndham, he's with Davey Coombs now. So Kevin, I know the plan tonight for you and Chad was to get Ricky. You lost him on the start. Yeah, he was gone and uh, he's been riding good. And, and the more he wins, the more Chad and I want to uh, want to get up there and uh, battle with him. And he's been riding good, but uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about my ride tonight. Last weekend I got third as well, but uh, those guys just completely blew me away. And uh, you know, Ricky got me a lot on the start and the opening couple laps, and then I was able to kind of hang with Chad a little bit. Later in the race, he started pulling away from me, but um, this was at least a respectable ride and, and uh, a ride in the right direction from the from the previous rides early in the season when I was crashing and, and uh, not even finishing the race. So I was happy to uh, keep my Amsoil Chaparral factory connection Honda up front and uh, Rocket Prizegate and all the guys at uh, No Fear, Alpine Star, DVS Shoes, Spy Goggles, the Ride Helmets. It's been a while since I felt good about my ride, and tonight was it. Thanks, Davey. Our Nissan turning point, Diddy. There's no question. Ricky Carmichael in the woods. Look at this big hop swap. He hits his last bump. The thing kicks to the left. He lands and goes. He doesn't even miss a beat. Had that thing gone right to the left, he would have gone down. That's the turning point tonight. He went high side and went down hard. Let's go back down to Davey Coombs with second place. Chad, I saw you talking to your mechanic there in Sorensen after the race. You couldn't hide the despair. You looked completely frustrated. Yeah, it's tough, you know, it's tough to get a, a good start and uh, be right there and he had the whole shot, he just uh, just ran away from the beginning, you know, and it's tough, everybody does the same thing on the track and uh, it's all the stopwatch, you know, we're so even and kind of takes a big mistake or some uh, lapis or something like that, so, uh, you know, it's just a frustrating race to, to be in second and, you know, be that gap behind him, but, uh, you know, we just got to keep working, having fun and... Uh, Thank all my sponsors for sticking by me, all the guys at Parson and Thor and uh, the guys at Yamaha are doing a great job and just looking forward to the uh, next couple of races. 
The Supercross Road leads to Las Vegas, Nevada. You better come join us. All the chips are in. We'll crown a 250 champion. And of course, the Dave Coon Senior East-West Memorial Shootout. The headquarters, the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino, the road to Las Vegas. Come join us. The THQ World Supercross GP point standing. Carmichael on top. He fought the defending champion. Drops back to fourth spot. We look at the AMA Supercross Series standings. Carmichael gains three more points. Let's go back down to David Coombs. Well, RC, another one. I don't even know how many you got now, but I got to ask you about that save. How did you save that bike through the whoops? I don't know, man. Uh, I got a, a, you know, a lucky horseshoe, I guess. Uh, you know what? Uh, I just got luck on my side and, and the strength from uh, my trainer, Eldon Baker. You know, I was able to hold on to that dog and uh, it was a heck of a ride for sure. Good win tonight. You had Chad behind you, Kevin behind you. Now you go back to Daytona, to Orlando, Bubba coming back. How's this thing going to end? Uh, I'd like to end up on top, you know, uh, it, it, we still got seven more races, but the whole shot was important tonight, and uh, my Bridgestone tires and the Makita Suzuki was a perfect combo tonight. Uh, that was that was everything to start, and we got it done. Good job. Thank you. Now our next show will be in Ricky's backyard, Orlando, Florida, March 27th, a one-week delay from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern. Mazebo, your thoughts on this race? Well, Mr. Floyd, I didn't think Ricky Carmichael could be any better than he is every other weekend on the heels of a comeback victory in atlanta it was nothing but pure domination here in st louis and you got to ride on the edge to win championship and ricky carmichael does just that everyone else back to the drawing board supercross.cc.com where you can check us out supercross live click on inside dirt this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports for more log on to espn.com for davy and devo i'm robbie floyd we'll see you in orlando and remember bubba's back <laughs>